Welcome back, I'm Calvin Statue Fanatic here with another review and today we're going to take a look at a piece that I was extremely excited to get in. I've been waiting for almost two years to get this in and the unique thing about this is this is my first ever fan art piece. I have been collecting like some of you guys know some of the pieces I have are over 25 years. Um, Boeing pieces, you name it, but this is the first piece that I've gotten that you would consider fan art. And I want to go over it with you guys and share some of the things that I have about uh, that I think about it. But before we do that, and I don't think I have to go into great detail about who this character is, but of course this is Spawn. And the reason I wanted a large scale version of Spawn is because he is one of my favorite characters, if not the most non-Marvel DC favorite character that I have. Um, I have several statues of Spawn, but none of them are large-scale statues. McFarlane has released a number of really good, I mean really good resin statues, but and, and they fetch a pretty nice premium, but I wish he would somehow release a large quarter-scale um, statue of his character. It would be so awesome. But there are ways that people with desires to have this get filled. Um, this is a very, very limited, I won't say how many, but really, really limited run of these statues. Uh, not very many out there at all. You uh, And and I kind of like that because I have different thoughts and feelings about the whole fan art thing. But with this being such a very limited edition, um, I'm okay with that. But I want to talk a little bit about Spawn. Not a whole lot because I think... Outside of the DC of Marvel Universe, he's probably the most of one of the most popular comic book heroes, anti-heroes out there. But of course, this is of Al Simmons as Spawn, uh, who was killed uh, by one of his friends, Chapel, and he made a deal with the devil to come back to Earth because he wanted to be with his wife, Wanda. After making that deal with Mel Boja, he had no idea what he was going to be in for. And so, uh, what, 20 years later, the story is still going on. And it's one of those books where I've continued to read over those two decades. Um, there's been a lot of books that, you know, you read stories, you stop, you pick things up. But this is one of those stories, one of those characters that I've enjoyed reading. Some really cool things have happened as a result of the Spawn um, comics. For example, Angela, who's now in the Marvel Universe, was a character uh, in this, who now we know to be Thor's half-sister. So that was pretty cool. But this particular statue of Spawn on Throne is really a legit throne piece in that this is a take from the issue 250 uh, of the Spawn comics and he basically appears on the cover just like this. The artist did a really good job of um, taking that cover and producing a statue as a result of it. I think he did a really good job and I'll turn it around a few times so that you can see it. But that issue is pivotal in that it is the issue where Spawn, the backstory and the issue where Spawn, Al Simmons as Spawn, makes his return to the Spawn universe and reclaims the throne. So it's a very pivotal issue. And then the artist, the original artist team back up. I won't get more into his history because he is a very popular character and most people in the comic world kind of know a little bit about his story. And if you just do a little Google, you'll see um, you can find more out about it, but let's talk about the statue. So the first thing that I'm going to do is talk about the size of it because this is a one-fifth scale statue. It's not a one-quarter scale statue according to the creator, but because the base is so big and then this is so tall, the throne is so tall, it actually um, fits into the space of what a one-quarter scale statue would fit into because this goes up to from the base here to here is about 20 inches right there. And then if I go from the back of this that sticks out to this first piece of his cape, that's about 21 inches right there. And then if I decided to, let's see if we do it from across, from the piece of his cape that's sticking out there to the piece over here, that's about 21 inches. So it is a substantial statue that's going to require some space to store it. Now, I did a, took, a, took a while before I decided to do the review because... It's a fan art piece, like I said, and then I looked over it and I had different thoughts and different, different opinions about it. And it's one of those pieces that after having it for a number of weeks, it started to grow on me. Um, it, it was never a bad piece, but there were certain things about it that I didn't like. And one of the things I will say about fan art is that 
not having the direct communication to be able to do certain things and get certain things taken care of is kind of a pain. So it's this is not something that I will probably do on too many more occasions, and especially if I did, it would be with someone that I knew very closely. I had a very personal relationship with. But that said, let's talk about the statue. Now, as far as Spawn is concerned, he looks really good. This body comes out of there it, and, and all of that hand comes apart, all of this comes apart. And I'm not going to take it apart because this should have come with instructions. It was a bitch to put together because I literally had a friend and myself turning this thing around to find the places where these things went. Because when you get a statue like this, you get no instructions whatsoever. Uh, but we figured it out. And once we got it all together, it looked really good. There's a, key, uh, a few key pieces on here. He has the chain, which is a very iconic piece. I'm thinking about getting some wiring uh, from a hobby shop and threading it through the chain so that I can um, shape the chain so that they look a little bit more menacing the way they do in the comics. I wanna do that. But let's just start with the kind of, let's see here. We'll start with his body. The, the sculpt of the body is really nice, and when you care you and when you compare it to what's on cover issue 250, there it looks really similar. They did a really good job with that. I mean, there's a lot of detail and a lot of sculpting in it, and it is by far not without issues. But the issues that it has, you know, I'm gonna deal with it in the way that it's displayed and in the lighting that is displayed. It is, you know, it's going to be fine. And it's one of those pieces where if I ever sold it, it's going to be you pick it up because I will never package this to ship it because what it came shipped in can never be reused. And there are so many small and delicate pieces to this. Me shipping it, it is guaranteed no matter what I do, this will get broken. Bar none, it will get broken. So now as far as his head sculpts are concerned, uh, he came with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven head scopes, and he has a light up feature on him as well. And I'll turn the lights out and try to get uh, to look at that. I tried it before I started filming, and on it looks good in person, but trying to get it captured on video is very difficult to do. So he comes with a classic head spawn head uh, here, and his eyes are black here. When you look that way on, at his eyes, but this is one of the eyes that light up. All of them don't light up. And then you have him unmasked. Back in the day, we used to call it the hamburger head spawn on the action figures. So there's a couple of things that are happening here, some unique things. I don't know if you guys were aware of it, but he did a crossover with Batman. And it was a really good story, actually, but with him teaming up with the Dark Knight. And there's actually a really nice statue that I own. And I probably should do a review of that of Batman and Spawn. It's, it's a beautiful piece. It's really expensive now to buy, but I have that statue. And here... Um, this is where Batman's um, battering got sliced in his head. Of course, he doesn't kill Spawn by doing that. But then this is one of the head, and this all shows up in the comics. And this is the stitching in his head, presumably, presumably where the battering was taken out. So you got two heads there, and I'll try and put each of those on. And then you've got another sculpt of him without his mask on. That one doesn't light up. Then you have this one with another mask, just slightly different. It does light up. It doesn't light up either. And then you have Al Simmons unmask. Uh, in fact, the way that he shows up in the comics now, he actually shows up not as the hamburger head spawn. He actually has his regular human face in the current um, story that's in Spawn now after he's returned. Now, as far as the rest of his body is concerned. Like I said, it looks nice. His torso comes out, the legs come off. But one of the things that I had, you know, concerns about when I got it was I can see the seams where all those things happen. And that is something that normally I would not accept on a statue. But considering the situation of fan art and that type of thing, there's some things that I guess kind of go with the territory. I love the statue. I have to separate that from the flaws that I see on it. Like on his arm, you can see the seams around his neck. You can see the seams around his thigh where his leg comes out. You can see the seams there. And that is not something that I would necessarily be happy with. But 
is a, is a decision that I made to buy a fan art piece. And sometimes that comes with the territory from what my friends tell me. Now, as far as his cape is concerned, I, uh, it's kind of part of the base. He's sitting on his cape. There's pieces of it that come out here. And many of these pieces come loose, but you can't tell which ones unless you move them. And that's what I was saying where you kind of definitely needed some instructions on where it should go. I will say this. None of this arrived broken the way that it was packaged, but the way that I had to unpack it, I could never use that packaging again. Um, now, as far as the base is concerned, <laughs> it's really cool. Um, it's really nice in terms of what they were trying to do. When you look at the actual comic book cover and Capello's and McFarlane's artwork, they did a really good job bringing that to life because this entire throne is made out of bones and, if you will, probably rotting corpses of some kind. There's skulls throughout it that has lots of detail. I even see a spinal cord there, uh, spinal cord here. And also, um, when something's out in the elements with this type of organic material on it, you may tend to get fungus and and types of moss to grow on it or whatever and that's what you have growing here is all that kind of green stuff here is pretty much moss and fungus or whatever so it gives it what i would expect if i if you would see this like in that is dumb to say in real life it probably wouldn't be a pretty sight you know most of us would probably go you know gag or something because it's pretty foul in terms of what this is supposed to be now here, this piece actually comes all the way off here, and you can see more detail of what I'm talking about. Now, this is one of the other issues that I had with, with the statue is that this is a really, really heavy piece too, by the way. But when I put this back on, it fits in the key rather, rather securely and nicely. It fits in the key. But the issue that I have is that that entire seam where it fits is quite prominent without a doubt you can see it um, the same thing with where his head fits on you can see that quite well uh, but again it's a piece that definitely you know really had no choice I'm gonna keep it and um, if someone else were to do one that I was more satisfied with I wouldn't have a problem parting with this statue because I do would love a statue of him on throne like this because that issue 250 is so pivotal in the story. I would love to have that. But for now, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, he's got the skull here that comes out, fits. There's a magnet there with the skull here. You can see that. That's pretty cool. Um, so another touch that the artist tried to do, and I get what the artist was going for, and that is there's this stringy stuff here. Now, what this is supposed to be is kind of like cobwebs and things like that, but it looks like what they did was use kind of a glue gun to make it stringy, and it kind of stuck to different areas, giving it that random um, spider web thing. I didn't like that at all, so I pulled as much of it off as I could. It just it annoyed me. I, d I just didn't like it. Uh, it could, maybe there was a way to make it look differently, but I didn't like it one bit. Now, I'm going to plug it up and see with the lights on what it looks like when you light it up but you'll see it's pretty difficult to see i'll plug that up you probably can see his eyes lit up there um and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn some of these lights down and once i do that we'll see what happens here we'll turn those down and then I'll turn some of the spotlights down there. Keep the side lights on. I'm not gonna do a whole lot of editing of this video, so it is what it is, guys. So here, you can see where it does light up. And take it off, see the light goes away. Now, and each of the heads that light up have a little connector there. So if I take this off and put the regular Al Simmons head on, that lights up with his eyes. And then um, I think this one here that he has the stitching on, that one lights up as well. 
And then there are lights all around the base. There are lights on the back of the base. Now when I don't have the lights as high as they are right now, and I have him displayed over there, it actually looks really cool when he's sitting there and the lights are on. And the fact that it's not battery and it's powered, you know, I, I, would tend, I tend to leave it on longer than I would, of course, if it were battery powered. But the light up feature works really well. And now and in this lighting, to be fair, none of those mistakes or, or things that I notice show up. And because of the coloring of it, they don't show up that, what, that bad either. I have it sitting over here on a stand by itself and it tends to work. It tends to work. But I do know that there are some other fan pieces that may get made out there that I may be interested in, but it's not the market that I'm pretty much gonna play and I know a lot of people do um, with the fan art and that type of stuff, but for me, I'm definitely probably more of a Diamond Direct Sideshow Prime One XM Figurama type person when it comes to these types of statues and that's probably going to be my primary source but it was kind of fun getting my first uh, fan art and I just always wanted to say that this is my fan art piece <laughs> so um, well this is going to be a raw video, so that's about all I got with Spawn. You guys got some comments or anything about it, please let me know what you think about this guy. Um, I'm going to turn the lights on one more time, and I'm going to turn them around there pretty slow so you can see him. And then we're going to call this quits. We're going to call it a day. Um, take that off. I'll uh, turn that guy around like that. You can see the back here. Really sculpted well on the back. And, and I have to be fair is what I'm trying to say. I, I, want, I don't want to just give some glowing praise about this because it does have issues. But I have to say, this is art. And I, and I love what the artist did and the concept that this artist had. It's great. I love that. But I guess when you're doing this in this way, there are going to be issues and it's going to be, you know, maybe not what I'm used to. But par for the course, right? So we'll take that off and we'll put this one on. You can see what that one looks like there. And we'll take this guy off and we'll put the bat battery, which I like that one a lot. I like it. So, guys, I hope I covered most of what any of you would be interested in terms of seeing a piece like this. My first review of a fan art piece, and um, I definitely want to be respectful. I'm not one of those guys that love to blast people just because, because I cannot do this. And I respect the artist that can create like this. I wish. I was only born with the ability to buy. For some reason, I was cursed. I wish I was born with the ability to create this art like this art like George and others. I, I admire them so much and I see others collectors say things like that's whack and that's this and they couldn't even draw stick men if they tried. So I definitely don't want to come off as slamming this piece at all. Just wanted to point out that it is definitely not perfect if somehow you were to acquire it, acquire this piece. Well, that concludes my Brief review, I think it's going to be brief, <laughs> of Spawn on Throne. And if you want to stay on top of the latest in the world of collecting, please make sure you stay tuned to mcecentral.com. Also, check us out on Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook. Let's try our YouTube channel where things are blowing up over there. Uh, we I have a pop guy that, seems, that th seems to think he's ruling the world, but I love him. He's doing a great job. Good job, Seth. So please, guys, check it out. And for those of you who entered the contest for the 5,000 um, subscriber giveaway, good luck. And my hat's off to you. And I appreciate all of the time that you guys spend watching us and supporting us. So until next time, keep it marvelous.